Our Bible has 66 books contained in it. And scripture tells us in 2 Timothy 3.16 that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for proof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness, that the person of God may be perfect, meaning complete, thoroughly furnished to do all good work. In the book of Genesis, and in every book of the Bible, there's a message for us. Because it is our scripture. And a lot of times we don't understand the ubiquitous nature of the message that God has for us. It's everywhere present in every book of the Bible. In all 39 chapters, our books of the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, and in all 27 books of the New Testament or New Covenant. The first book, Genesis, is given a name by the Latin crowd, but the Hebrew crowd calls each book by the first few words in the book. Uh, The book of Genesis starts off with the Hebrew word Bereshit, and it means in a beginning. There's no article there, so it's not the beginning. And given the infinite nature of God, it's easy to see why it says in a beginning. God has always been. And what the book of Genesis tells us is how things began. And It is a lesson to us. Our lives began. We were created in the womb. God knew us there. We were given birth. We nursed uh, for the first year, maybe, some longer. Uh, But originally, (laughs) but, but after a while, we got off of milk and became able to read and write and educate ourselves. Uh, And that's what the book of Bereshit, Genesis, is all about. It is the creation narrative for us. It goes through every aspect of our lives, from our being created, us discovering our weaknesses, um, at the age of accountability, deciding to to be sinners, God making a covenant with us, uh, teaching us about the heart of mankind and the first murder, uh, the selfish fall of humanity, which many of us go through, the the flood of guilt that comes over us, uh, the confusion at the Tower of Babel, Uh, when it's hard to understand anything. And many of us go through every one of those phases in our lives before we come to a knowledge of who God really is and what God really wants. I'm a firm believer in once saved, always saved. Uh, I, I don't believe we quit sinning. I don't believe we're capable. I don't know of any body that's a believer who's perfect. So we have to deal with our sinful nature our entire lives. The great thing about once saved, always saved, is it teaches us that once we accept Jesus as our Savior, and he knew we were going to, or who, who, who would and who would not, all of our sins of our entire lives We're on that cross. The sins of our past, the sins of our present, the sins of our future were all nailed to that cross with Jesus. And we live a life in his grace, having been forgiven, even for things we don't know we're going to do yet. 
That's part of the covenant that God makes with us. After we've been through the flood, and that's really a symbol of our baptism, we become part of the second covenant, and that's the people that survived the flood uh, and go on to inhabit, be inhabited by the, the Spirit of God in our new lives. It's the it's it's the epitome of another chance. And every time we do things wrong, God gives us another chance. Because he's already nailed those things to the cross. Uh, after Noah, after God chose Noah, and he was the most righteous man, the most right man in his generation, and he built the ark uh, and survived the flood uh, after Noah came off of the boat and let all the animals loose. God told Noah, you can now eat meat. And many people believe that means it was totally a vegetarian society beforehand. May have been. That's not a bad explanation. But he also told people that if anybody kills someone, that they should be killed. That's capital punishment in, in Genesis 9. Uh, he also gave us a rainbow and said that he would never again destroy earth by water. Of course, the next time we know will come by the flood. Uh, I mean, not by the flood, but by fire. And that's talked about in the book of Revelation. We, we're, we're witnessed our lives in the order of the events of the book of Genesis, Bereshit, a beginning. Our lives are a beginning and have an end, just like the book of Genesis does. Of course, we go on and, and discover the genealogy and lineage of Noah through his three children, uh, Japheth, Ham, and Shem, and what those people represent. They are uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and uh, we are all descendants mostly of Japheth, who went north and settled in Europe. And all, most of our ancestors here came from the European families. Ham's family was, uh, went south and, uh, inhabited Africa and Saudi Arabia and, and so forth. Shem's family became the family of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and, uh, the Ishmaelites. So, uh, but human government took over. Uh, I, I was, in geology, when I discovered uh, chapter 10 uh, in Genesis, especially verse 25, I was studying plate tectonics. And the Bible even tells us when the earth began to move. That's in the days of Peleg in chapter 10 in verse 25. God actually recorded the separation of the, um, the continents for us. Uh, Somewhere in here, the book of Job fits, and uh, and uh, also the Tower of Babel after that, when mankind decided they were going to reach to the heavens and and uh, become like God. And God said, we're not going to put up with that. And the confusion of languages uh, was the decree by the Trinity, and mankind separated from then on out. It's actually, you can look on uh, Google Earth in um, the town of Mosel, which is uh, where Nimrod built the tower. And there's actually a circular brick uh, foundation where the Tower of Babel stood at one time. Uh, and you can see all that on Google Earth. It's still there to remind mankind that we're not going to be gods. Uh, we are merely the children of God. Uh, the um, the fall uh, that represented uh, is represented by the Tower of Babel is important to us because there are oftentimes we go through life and 
we don't have the foggiest idea what's going on or what people are saying. And when people say things they don't mean and lie to us and cheat us, uh, governments are corrupt that way. Uh, and dictators become despots and uh, punish people right and left. Uh, the regime of Hitler and the killing of all the Jews and Nazi concentration camps. Uh, many of the governments, once they gain control and find out that they can legislate their actions and get away with things, uh, governments become corrupt. And I'm not even so sure we have a, a good government now. And most of the most of the empires of the world have gone through good times and turned to bad times in order to hold on to the power. And that's a problem. Uh, the genealogy of the earth has continued to grow regardless uh, uh, until the call of Abraham. Specific people called out to do specific things. The lineage of Christianity is the same way. It was a bloodline through which the gospel has flown, a flow, flowed, flowed. Uh, and people depend upon a reality that may not always be true, where uh, they go to church and hear the gospel and believe it, and not all those who preach are preaching truth. Um, the lineage was passed from Abraham to Joseph, uh, and uh, the one scripture in, in, in the Bible that I want to read to you is, or another scripture, Genesis 39 talks about Joseph. Uh, we need to understand that the things we go through in life are God ordained sometimes, and they're tough times. We don't always get to have the best things happen to us, but Genesis 39 2, I I'm just going to read to you out of the King James, says, And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. If you remember, Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers, and and he ended up in the house of Potiphar, and God blessed him there. Uh, the word was is actually the Hebrew word hayah, and it really means, and God allowed it this way. And God allowed uh, uh, and God was with Joseph. God allowed himself to be with Joseph. And it says, uh, and he was a prosperous man. And God allowed him to be a prosperous man in the house of Potiphar. He made Potiphar richer by his being there. And it says, and he was in the house of his master. And God allowed him to be in the house of Potiphar. And of course, the house of Potiphar was where all the problems started because Potiphar's wife seduced him and lied about it and or tried to seduce him. And Joseph was falsely accused and thrown in prison. And he stayed there for several years before uh, he became the answer to the Pharaoh's dream and eventually rose to the position of second in command in Egypt, and he ended up saving not only himself and all the Egyptians, but he ended up saving his family who had come to Egypt, uh, which sets up the next book, the Exodus. But think of what Joseph had to go through, and it says, and God allowed it. God allowed it for a reason. But you understand, when we go through life, it's not all going to be sugar-coated and, and uh, sweet times and and good things happening, God's going to allow us to develop over time and become the people that God wants, uh, the people that God can use. And that's what happened to Joseph. He, he had to go through hard times and difficult times and, and times in jail, times in prison, times as a servant, times as a slave uh, to become the person who would not only save Israel, but save Egypt. And countries around them, uh, as uh, 
Pharaoh's servant, a second in command over all of Egypt, which leads to um, uh, Joseph um, having uh, children uh, uh, and Jacob. uh, or Isaac and Jacob uh, following, and the blessings that came through them uh, all the way to Moses, leading them out of their bondage. Uh, uh, and the, all this is done by covenants in the Old Testament. That's what we have. We have a covenant with Jesus Christ as our Savior who bought us and redeemed us uh, out of our misery, which is the word for Egypt in, in Scripture, that we might be all that God wanted us to be. Genesis is a creation narrative of our lives, and we have to understand, what is the message in the book of Genesis for us? Uh, how we were created, the things we've been through, and where we are now are all part of God's plan. Jesus, God began a work in, in our lives from the time we were conceived. Uh, we're part of his bloodline because we're here believers in Jesus Christ as our Savior. Uh, we are priests after the order of Melchizedek, and we belong to a kingdom of priests. And eventually we'll be a part of God's eternal kingdom. I've listed here on this page uh, 318 times the word Hayah occurs, occurs in Genesis. Sometimes it's, it came to pass. Sometimes it's just the simple verb was. But in every one of these cases, it's saying to us that God allowed things to happen this way for a reason. And here's the reason. And the stories that are given are the applications for us to our lives. So essentially it's saying to us, there are 318 times we ought to be able to getting something out of this that apply to our lives. Maybe not every time, but out of 318 times, some of those are going to stick to us. And maybe it's only a tenth. Maybe it's only 32 times we read. But do you understand God's trying to talk to us through the words of Scripture to bring us closer to him, to develop us into vessels that he can use and to bring about his will and his his plan for this world? We're part of all that. God has a great message to deliver to the world through each of us. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to use each and every one of us. Of course, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior um, and you die too soon, your heart, your body, and soul are going to go into the ground to sleep to await the second death, which is a resurrection uh, to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire. That lake of fire is the second death. But as I told you last week, as we talked about what happens to a believer versus a non-believer when they die, uh, because we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior and the Spirit of God lives in us, our spirit goes directly to be with God in heaven. Uh, Our bodies will be resurrected later if we die before the rapture. If we go in the rapture, our body and spirit will all be taken at the same time after those that have already passed before us who have died with the Spirit of God in them, their bodies will be resurrected first. That's what it talks about in the books of Thessalonians. Uh, The dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together in the air. That's the rapture of the church. Our goal is to be all that God wants us to be. So there are 66 books waiting for you to look into, to find the message that God has for you uh, so that you can become all that God wants you to be. If you just read one book a month in five and a half years, you'd cover every book in the Bible. 
and every book in the Bible as a message for us from God. And I pray that you will find it. In Jesus' name, amen.